Welcome to MT Guitar. Hope you're doing well. Um, today, doing a live stream lesson on finally learning the notes on the guitar. A little bit of intro music while people shuffle in. Um, haven't done a live stream since New Year's, so let me know if you're hearing me all right, you're seeing me all right. Um, I was having a little fun. I bought the uh, flashback TC Electronic flashback delay pedal, and I actually just plugged it in now and I'm um, gonna do some fun stuff with some Pink Floyd Fridays with that and uh, probably on the electric mostly but I just thought it would be fun to check that out with the looper uh, very happy with it so far it's got a lot of fun goodies so how's everyone doing let me know how you're doing today and uh, say hello got a fun lesson for you today um, so why don't I just jump right in? And this is a great chance to do a Q&A if you have any questions for me on these topics or anything else. Uh, just feel free to ask and I'll try to keep up with it. Doror is asking, can you sing an original? Sure, yeah, I'll do some originals. Sounds very good, glad, glad to hear. Um, hey Daniel, nice to see you. Um, yeah, in fact, speaking of originals, I do uh, have some exciting news. I'm, I'm almost done with the um, mixing process. Well, I'm not doing the mixing, but the mixing engineer is very talented. Andrew Garver um, is doing the mixing and it's really wrapping up nicely and it's almost ready for, you know, the final stages of, of mastering and, and all that. So uh, it's more of an acoustic based album and I'll be posting about that. So I'll play a song from that album as we go here. So stick around. Do hit the thumbs up if you don't mind, and um, check out the Patreon if you ever uh, get a chance. And I think you'll be um, pleased with what's out, what's what's up there. If you're interested in getting better at, you know, uh, technique, um, playing songs, strumming, playing lead, uh, there's plenty of study guides up there. There's backing tracks. There's, you know, uh, all sorts of fun stuff. So, okay. Jumping into the lesson here. So I was teaching uh, one of my students and it dawned on me about a certain thing I'd like to teach today, which is how to finally learn the notes on the guitar. Okay, now why is this such a struggle? Well, because let's take another instrument like um, piano, for instance. You very, very clearly see the white notes and black notes, okay? And you can tell, hey, here's you know, C, D, E, etc. all the way. You've got seven letters, right? And then here are the black notes. And there's seven white notes, five black notes. Voila, you have the, the full chromatic scale, all 12 notes. So that's great for the piano because it's very visually uh, accessible. And when you play, say, a key of G, you know that there's your F sharp because you can see the F sharp. You know, you can't really see this piano probably, but there's an F sharp, it's really clear. On the guitar, it's not clear because we've got an F sharp all sorts of places. And you may be way up the neck and you're looking for that F sharp and you don't know where it is because it's just sort of no man's land out in the fretboard. So it dawned on me, 
how do I teach this with the letters? Because what I do is, especially with my private students, we really focus on the numbers. Okay, the numbers meaning one through seven. You can flat the two, three, five, six, or seven, and then you have all 12 notes that way. And that's really how the, the pros do it. That's how guitarists especially do it. Uh, some call it the Nashville numbering system, um, but it goes beyond Nashville. It's, it's sort of, you know, the reason why we call, cor call chords seventh chords or sus chords, right? Sus four or sus two, nine chords. That's all using the numbers in a way that works in all 12 keys. And that's generally what I teach because it's very powerful. Um, I can, you know, especially with Roman numerals, if we talk about chord progressions. So that's great. But then there's this issue. I'm sort of displaying the issue for us here so we can understand the issue of why we're having issues learning the actual letters on the guitar. There's this issue of not knowing where the notes are. And that more has to do with key signatures. If I'm in the key of E major, right, and and I want to go up from chords, I'm not going to know necessarily even the sharps in the key. There's four sharps, F sharp, G sharp, C sharp, and D sharp, you know. So how am I going to know those notes? Um, well, you could memorize all the 12 key signatures, which I've done, of course, because you know I've gotten a uh, plenty of degrees in music, but it's a laborious and lengthy process, and I don't think it's necessary to play guitar. So what else is there? Well, that's what this whole live stream is about. So it's allow me to take some time to let this unfold because this is exciting stuff, but it's a bit, you know, it takes some preparation. And feel free to ask questions if anything is unclear or if you have anything to add. Okay, let's say I have a goal of memorizing the bass notes. All right, so we need to know where certain notes are through memory. So I'm going to give away some secrets. Th these are some of the things that I teach in the very first private lessons I teach. By the way, if you're interested in private lessons, email me. Um, I'm, I'm looking for more students right now. I'm trying to move back to California where I'm from and it's it's very expensive to move. If you've ever moved, you know what I'm talking about. So yeah, I'm looking for work. I'm, I'm uh, looking for more students, putting it out there. Um, that being said here, we, what we wanna do is we wanna memorize the bass notes. This is what I tell my students right away. Up to the seventh fret, sixth and fifth strings, okay? So you've got 12 notes in music and the octave is the boundaries of those 12 notes. So if I have a low E and a high E, this is a high E, this is a low E, relatively speaking, all 12 notes exist within there. Now you may take it a step further and say, I might as well just get the bass notes on all 12 frets of the sixth and fifth strings. E to E, A to A, also a great idea. So uh, from there, what you need to do is you need to have a very basic skill. What is the price, Dror is asking. Um, well, uh, if you send me an email, I'll send you my teaching info and rates. Um, generally, I recommend you do a package of five one-hour lessons for three hundred dollars, and that's that's my rate right now. If you want to do one lesson at a time and just sort of try it out, you can do seventy dollars an hour. Uh, it's too low of a rate, but uh, I want to make it affordable. So, um, you know. Uh, that 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 those are the rates that I'm happy to offer that so let me know back to the lesson let's say I've got uh, this very basic skill of how do I take any note down the octave to find what note it is so if I'm playing a note let's say I play this note I don't know really know what this note is right off hand I need to have the skill of taking it down an octave which is three frets away two strings away and then one more time, two strings, two frets. So I'm kind of working backwards here. I'm going to rush through this part of the lesson because, again, these are my secrets that I teach my students. But you need to know how to take any note down to the bass. Then you can say, okay, well, that's a G because here's a G. I've got the bass notes memorized. All right? Now, um, there's a way to do that. You would say you would take any note. So let's say I take a, let's say I take a G first play the three notes in an open chord 
and there are three here. There's one, two, three. Anytime we have something on the low E string, it'll be the same fret on the high E string. And then I have the third string open. All right, my goal is to see these three Gs up 12 frets, because once we do that, we're done. The fretboard repeats at 12 frets, and we've done our job. We've played every G on the fretboard. In order to do that, I'm gonna speed you through one of these secrets I teach. You need to play the octave rule. So we need to go as many octaves up or down as we can. So I'm gonna go two strings, two frets. That'll always work. Replace it with my index. Three frets, if we go to the second or first string, we simply add a fret because of the tuning. I, I, it's like hyperdrive, but I wanna to get to the uh, to the meat of this lesson here, so I'm just preparing us. So there's a G, a little out of tune. The spring is really messing with my uh, guitars here. So there's a G. Now I'm at a, a difficult situation where there's nowhere to go as far as two strings down. So I have to go three strings up over two frets. Hey, uh, Mirko from Italy. Thank you very much, appreciate that. So I have to go sort of down an octave and I have to kind of, this is the C shape, by the way, if you know your cage, but I have to go up three strings over two frets. Kind of a weird one, but now I have a G. This G is unison with this G, five frets up a string. So I'm throwing out a lot of information here. All right, almost done. Two strings, two frets. It'll always work unless it's the second or first string. Now we're getting close. I'm at the 12th fret. Three, three frets will do it because it's the second or first string. Anything on the high E is going to be in the low E. And what do you know? We have the three G's. So hopefully you followed me on this logic. We found the three G's from this open G. So that's really essential skill. That's actually just very introductory and basic, although a lot of students skip that. But if you have the bass notes memorized and you have the very basic skill of playing one note everywhere, you're ready for the, the next part of what I'm about to teach. All right. So that, that, you know, don't skip that. And if you want to just take the week and memorize the bass notes, pick any note, run it all across the fretboard. That's gonna be serving you forever. All right, so what to do from there? That's just a preparatory statement. Here it is. Let's say you've memorized a major scale pattern. I think most of us watching today probably have done that. Uh, you've played a major scale. Actually, most of you probably will start with C do that and maybe you do it in a couple positions maybe you do G okay and then you get to minor and this isn't necessarily a scale lesson but you should all memorize at least one pattern of major and one pattern of minor and what you should do is you should understand the formula of major and minor meaning if I'm in a major scale I want to know that it's whole steps the whole time besides two spots between the third and fourth note and seventh and first note because remember after seven notes the octave repeats if you're in a scale so one two three you could even do it on one string whole step to three three to four half step whole step to seven seven to one half step so that's what's happening as you're playing vertically. Basically, you're just not doing it on one string, so you're um, factoring in the tuning. All right? Am I making sense so far? We, we're, our, our goals are memorize a, a, a major scale pattern. There's five of them. That's, uh, they correlate with the shapes of caged. If I'm in G, this happens to be the E shape because it's on an E string bass and it's hitting all the notes on an E shaped chord. So once you memorize a pattern, that's great. You'd want to do that up and down the neck. And now we get to my lesson, which is a long preparation to tell you, here's how you can finally learn the notes on the fretboard anywhere apart from the bass notes. All right. Let's say you, let's, let's switch to A major, all right? Then we'll do minor. Then I'll play some songs. 
So if I'm in A major, let's say I've learned a, a, a scale position that's quite up the neck, sort of in that area where we might be lost and you might not know where the notes are. And you really just want to learn the notes and you, you don't have the key signatures memorized, so you, you don't even know what sharps or flats are in the key. Well, let's try this out. Let's say I play this major scale. I have no clue what the notes are besides this is A. All right, so that's, that's our starting spot. All right, now I'm gonna noodle around and then I'm gonna stop on any given note and I'm gonna find out what note that is by going back to the bass. So, let's say I stop there. What note is this? Well, I do my octave trick and I find that it's an E because I've memorized my bass notes. So I know this is an E, nice. It's the five. One, two, three, four, five. E. Let's keep going. Stop here. Okay, let's do the octave trick. There's C sharp, it's on the bass. If that's too far up for you, you can do the five fret up a string unison rule, and then you should have this memorized that it's C sharp. So now I know A, C sharp, and E. And I've done it all on the fretboard. I didn't have to look at a theory book or look at the internet for the key signature. I just know E, because it's E, C sharp, because it's C sharp. And I can follow the unisons and octaves to find that note. Let's keep going. That's a nice note. What, what the heck is that? Well, I'm kind of, uh, this one's kind of an easy one because it's 12th fret of the B string, so it's got to be B. But using my method, you would say, okay, what note is this? Down an octave, down an octave, it's B. Now I can see that it's a B, because I'm seeing the octaves. B. What's this note? Take it down the octave, it's a C sharp. How is this, how is this settling in for you? Is that making sense? I go up to here. I say, what note is that? I take it down an octave, take it down an octave until I recognize the area because it's the bass. It gets better. This is just the beginning as well. All right, it gets better. Now we say, that's great, uh, Mitch, but it's kind of dry, right? You're, you're asking me to noodle around in a scale kind of aimlessly, then stop and find a note. Now, I like doing that, but I'm kind of weird. Uh, I love just sort of noodling around, but I understand that it helps to have things in context because a lot of times we learn a lot faster when there's music happening, whether it's a song or whether it's uh, in rhythm or a loop or a backing track or a drum track, whatever. Now, I'm all for that. So, what we're gonna do is we're gonna take songs and learn the Roman numerals of them. Then we're gonna find in them find these notes in the scales. So. Name that song, right? Let it be. So let it be is a one, five, six, four progression. Now, uh, does anyone know the Axis of Awesome? Um, they're an incredible uh, sort of a musical comedy group that did um, like a hundred songs all with the same chords, same chord progression. Now the reason they can make that work is not because it's literally the same chords in every song, it's because music is relative. So they take a song in the key of C, like Let It Be, they take a song in the key of <clears throat> G, like Country Roads, they take a song in the key of, you know, um, of, of A, like uh, No Woman, No Cry. That's not an A, but I'm just trying to think of songs. And they and they put it all in one key because it's this, it's relative. So you should do that too. You should understand the power of numbers. One, five, six, four will work in every key. All right, so let's do a couple more. How about... Um, uh, when I come around, okay, I think it's in the key of G. That's a one, five, six, four. Let's say I want to play over, 
I got a comment here. Also box number 10. Oh yeah, that's true. Yeah, Jim Croce. I have a lesson on that one. So let's say I want to play over uh, when I come around. First off, I can loop it. That loop was kind of a mess, wasn't it? Okay, that last loop. So here we go, when I come around, and then I'll talk about it as, as it's running. Three, four. Oh. Oh, that was weird. Looper malfunctioning. Three, oh. Guitar's off, because I didn't want the buzz through the mic. Three, four. socks on. I don't know if that... The loop's kind of off. It's okay. Let's do it again. I have socks on, so the looping, looping skills are kind of subpar. Three, four. There we go. So, turn that down a little bit. Now, if I want to play over the song, I should start with the G major scale, maybe, or G major pentatonic. Maybe find the melody. I can just hear that because of my ear training. So that's something you can work on. Now, what's important to note is that all these notes are in the G major scale that I just played. The melody that uh, Billy Joe is singing is G major scale. Three, four, three, two, one, right? Not like I think like that, but those are just the sounds. So that's great, but let's say I'm, let's say I even find the melody and I'm sort of really having a good time, but I want to know what the notes are. Well, let's say I start with the melody and I want to find out what that first note is. I can go down the octave. No, actually, I was already talking about this earlier. I wanted to mention something else. I want to first, before I do the melody, I want to talk about the Roman numerals. So if I know that this is a one, five, six, four, instead of just imagining that that's great to know and I can play rhythm, but then what we do a lot of times is we turn that part of our brain off and we switch to lead. And the one, five, six, four is a thing in the background. It's the nice rhythm track, but now we're playing, playing scales. So what we want to do is we want to connect those two worlds and say, if I'm at a G major scale here, I'm sort of lost now. I don't know where the notes are. Now I'm going to find the one, five, six, four in the scale degrees. So one is G. Okay. That's an easy one. Let's find D, E minor and C. Now we're going to use our knowledge of the chord progression, G, D, E, and C, to find these notes. G, this is the five, so it's gotta be D, even without the octave thing. It's gotta be a D, because the five chord is a D. The next chord is E minor, so that's the six. So I just find the six. There's E. Now I can keep in mind this is E. I can trace it back to the bass if I want even to the high E. Now the fretboard's starting to make sense. In, in a scale, I can see the G, D, and E. The last chord is C, so it's the four chord. So I got to the fourth note of the scale. Ah, there's a C. Okay, C. Now, that's not obviously C to me, even to me, because, again, I, I know the bass really well, and when I'm up here, sometimes I'm kind of lost, and the key helps me out. So use the key. The key is your friend. Here's a C because it's the fourth note and it's C is the four chord. So now I can play G, D, E, C. Root notes. Well, I heard it all before. Da, 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 da. And I'm being confident. Now I can go up to the higher octave. Just memorizing a pattern, a major scale pattern, using what I know about the Roman numerals. One, five, six, four. G, D, E, C. G, walk up to the five. That's got to be D. 
because it's the fifth note of the scale. So we're using the scale as an as a aid. The sixth note is E. One, two, three, four. There's the C. G, D, E, C. So look how easy this can be. All these rhymes because of letters. G, D, C, E. Look how easy this can be. All right. Same thing goes with the melody. Well, I heard it all before. Use your ear as a, as a motivator, right? If I say those notes sound great because it's what the melody is. Here's a B. How do I know that's a B? Well, this is the more the first method I talked about, going back to the bass. B to C again. Then you go back. If this is too high up, go up five frets up a string unison. There's a C. These are just the basics of understanding where you are. G. That's a D. So, uh, I'm bringing the, the, the note back if I need to, but what I'd really like you to do is say, what are the chords of the song? G, D, E minor, C in this case. What are the Roman numerals? One, five, six, four. So can I play a major scale and play the fifth note and just immediately know that that's D? Now you're learning the fretboard, okay? Woo! All right. Um, that's a lot of what I wanted to talk about with major. We still need to talk about minor. Let me play a song. Um, which song should I play? play thing about mines it's kind of a, a song I haven't played much um, on the channel or in public yeah might as well all right let's give it a go and then we'll talk about minor and I'll probably wrap it up because I need to watch game seven of the Warriors uh, they're in the Western Conference playoffs and yeah definitely gonna be watching that game and it starts in about half hour so um, I'm a little rusty on my live streams, uh, so hopefully uh, the quality is all right and I'm not going too fast. Dire Straits, yeah, I love Dire Straits. You know, I do have a lesson on um, Sultans of Swing that it was early on before I had the Patreon and it didn't get a lot of views. And when that happens, YouTube relegates it to the, to the YouTube uh, graveyard where, where videos go to die. <laughs> It's got like a thousand views, but uh, please check that video out and help help the stats out on that video because I worked really hard on that. That was, you know, almost three years ago. I mean, that was when I kind of started the channel. So check that out. Hey, Pat P, how are you? So hopefully everyone's enjoying the weekend. Um, remember to just have fun when you're practicing. That's, you know, if. We don't say that as enough as teachers is to really enjoy it. It's easy to tell you what to do and, and give you recommendations, but you're your own best teacher and your ear is more powerful than you think. And go go with that, you know, go with how the ear can help you and, and find the notes that you're hearing and enjoy it, get lost in the process, break the rules, right? Really important to mess up the fingerings. Um, the more you get lost, the more you'll learn the territory. cool so this is a called thing about minds and it's on an upcoming album of mine all right About minds, reality machine. 
what I was worried about. I'm totally blanking because I haven't performed this song. So I'll just skip the second verse. It's all right. Think about my Yes, the album will be on Spotify as well as, you know, Apple Music and YouTube, Amazon Music. All the places that you can find your streaming music. So, yeah, um, I've already got two albums out, uh, two solo albums out under my name, Mitchell Thomas. Very different albums, very different uh, phases. One of them was released in 2005. It's called A Maze in Grace. Very proud of that album. Uh, it, it's it's very different from what you might expect if you know me lately. Um, it's very hip hop, and uh, I used a lot of instruments. I used to play a lot more instruments daily: flute, saxophone, cello, banjo, mandolin, uh, piano, drums, bass, and so I put all those instruments onto like hip hop beats and. It's a very hip hop based album. So that was my first album. My second album was right when I sort of moved to LA for grad school, studying jazz at USC. And this album was sort of more psychedelic rock and singer songwriter. So with a little bit of hip hop, but more, more that. But I had a jazz band uh, backing me on that album. So the album is sort of a weird mix of psychedelic rock and singer songwriter meets jazz musicians and really interesting sound so that's called airplane 
Thanks, Mike. James saying that was great. Yes, that was an original. That's called Thing About Minds. Really happy with that one, although I'm, I'm a little disappointed that I sort of butchered the lyrics, but I'm glad you enjoyed it. And Dolores says, love your singing. Thanks very much. Um, been kind of having a, a, some allergies, and so my voice is not top-notch, but I appreciate that. I should stop being so self-deprecating. Um, but, you know, you always want your voice to be a little more clean, and right now it's kind of husky from the dry Colorado uh, weather. Okay, the story of the Telecaster behind me. This, I must say, I bought at a, a, at, a, at a guitar shop I used to work at in California, and it was already like this. And somebody had, it's not like a 50s Telecaster, that would be amazing, but it's, it's actually quite modern, and somebody had sort of um, done that on purpose a little bit, and it, and it marked down the price, so I was like, I'll buy this, because it's a nice Fender Telecaster. Unfortunately, the electronics are all uh, jacked up, and I can't get it to uh, be consistent. I can get it to make a sound, but then it's, it needs to have work done. So that's why I haven't been playing it, and I do apologize. Um, all right. Thanks, James. Yeah, thanks for uh, saying that. Yeah, the lyrics on that are, are fun. I, I, that was a good one. So, let me finish up the lesson, then I want to get to the game seven of, of the Warriors. By the way, is any are there any chess fans in the stream? Uh, the World Chess Championship just ended today. And um, wow, it was a crazy, crazy match. Ding Loren from China won against Yan Nepomneshi. And um, yeah, it just wrapped up today. Hopefully I didn't spoil it if anyone was watching, but... A lot of interesting stuff going on in the chess world so uh, yeah very very good match and now the basketball playoffs are on so really exciting day for me because I woke up watched the chess championship finish and now game seven of the playoffs so I wanted to squeeze in this live lesson so it, how is this making sense to you as far as finding any note by knowing the Roman numerals playing a scale and finding those Roman numeral notes anywhere and knowing and then you can also take any note and trail it down the octaves to the bass. What if we say, all right, cool, but let's take a song like Africa. The chorus is F sharp minor, right? Key of F sharp minor. So, now you would say, well, a minor is a different, different story, right? Um, how, do I, how do I understand minor at all? I don't know where the notes are or what's going on at all. Well, you would have to learn the Roman numerals of minor. So this is a one chord. D, D is a flat six. So you get a lot of flats in minor. Flat three is A. E is flat seven. So, okay, now some of you may be your heads are spinning because you may know this only as a six chord, right? And then this would be one chord. So this would be six, four, one, five. That's how some YouTube teachers insist on teaching it. It never makes sense to me though because this is home. You know, this is the one chord. And we resolve back to the one. So you have to learn minor from the one. This is what I have my students do as well. One flat six, flat three, flat seven. All right. Now, if we know that that's the case, we know that any scale, any minor scale, I should be able to find those notes. So that would be D, F sharp, and then D, A, E, D, A, E, flat six, flat three, flat seven. So a little bit of memorization going on. Now I say, all right, I'm going to take any minor scale. How about I just pick some random spot? Here's an F sharp. I know my minor scale as far as I can go. How about I go here? So I have the whole scale. Now I find those notes. So I'm going to find a flat six. Instantly I know it's D. Now I find a flat three. One, two, three. Flat three. I instantly know it's A because it's the Roman numeral in the chord. 
Then I find a flat seven. Good thing about flat seven is I just go down a whole step from the one and it's automatically an E. It has to be because those are the Roman numerals, see? Let the songs teach you where the notes are. Now, one, D, A, E, because they're in the scale. Flat six, flat three, flat seven. One, two, three, four, five, six. Five, four, three, two, one, seven. Play from you. F sharp to D to, to A to E. Any any position will do, right? F sharp, D, A, E. Let's take a more uh, reasonable position here. Memorize the minor scale. All of you can do that. Just put your fingers where the where the diagrams tell you. It's okay to do that at first. Then count to six. One, two, three, four, five, six. This has to be a D because the D is the flat six chord that is the in the chord progression. Then A, then E. So one, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, one, seven. Always using the one as your anchor. Let's have a little fun and jam over that, and then we'll call it a day. I hope that is a good primer for you. Your homework this week is to memorize the bass notes, get the basic skill of working the octaves across the fretboard, take some four chord songs. I've mentioned a few. Uh, I'll mention a couple other minor ones in a sec. And then learn the Roman numerals. So this is a big assignment. And then play a scale and find those Roman numeral notes and instantly know that's a D. Oh, that's an E because that's the chord, right? James says he's going to go back and watch it later. Yeah, and this is a lot. You know, this is something that you can do for the whole month, right? You can do it for, the, for, for a while and go slow. So I'm going to uh, loop Africa and have a little fun with it. And then we'll we'll see where we're at. Three, four. Let's see if I can get this delay pedal to have some fun with me here. Mm -hmm. Tap it up. crazy. Let's try looping the melody. Let's see what happens.
about some harmonies. Third part. Let's see. Hmm. Pretty. So, a little bit of a scattered performance on Africa, but uh, really, I was sort of trying to make it, you know, uh, clear that you do the you do the hard work, and then maybe you turn off your brain and just have some fun. And you know, I was just having a conversation with a private student, and we were talking about you know the the, the benefits of just getting lost in noodling. And then you get tired of that. Then you go back to the more, a little more dry analytical um, side of things, where you know, like I was talking about the lesson, you're finding out the scales, the Roman numerals, the notes. Then you get tired of that. Then you switch back to, you know what? I'm just going to make some music. My ear knows what to do. And this is what I'm trying to teach more: is that you know, the more we enjoy things, the more we get lost in the process. The easier the dry theoretical stuff can be. And it's my job as a teacher to encourage you to do, to do the fun stuff as well. And it's not, it's not really easy to tell you how to do that, right? Only you know how to get lost in the process and enjoy it. So that's a personal process for you. So there you go. Uh, I, I think I'm done with my spiel. Thank you all. Uh, quick question from, from Ken or Ken. Uh, any tips on electric guitar upstrums? Okay. Okay. Electric guitar up strums. I see. So, yeah, because it can be quite. Well, my electric's not plugged in. But let's see here. Okay, so the thing with electric guitar, just a quick answer to this question here, is if you want to get better at electric, you're going to have to get better at muting. And it controlling the beast, right? Because the electric is a lot of sound, and it's no longer coming from inside the wood. It's coming from your amp. In this case, it's coming from neither because my amp is over there. But I'm lifting up as soon as I do an upstrum, as opposed to which you can also do. But electric doesn't love just willy nilly strumming. Electric loves as if you're on a horse, control controlling the situation a little bit. Okay. So I'm going up and then I'm muting, meaning I'm lifting up. Yeah. All right, Do we brothers? I don't know if you can hear that that well, but that would be my suggestion is to work on muting, lifting the left hand. So I think that'll do it for me. And uh, remember to subscribe if you haven't already. Check through my videos. We've got over 450 videos, and a lot of them were very early on when we didn't have many subscribers. So, you know, hopefully uh, that's enough to check out for you. Remember, the Patreon is there. You can also email me if you want private lessons, which I am taking new students currently. And other than that, um, 
Really good to see you all. Thank you all for being awesome and wonderful people. Sorry I keep looking down. I'm looking at the live chat, but you're right there. Okay, and I think we'll do live streams more often. Uh, I think this was a good chance for me to get back into the swing of live streams, which I, I like because they're a little more Q&A, a a little more um, stretched out and, and all that. Thanks, guys. Have a good Sunday. We'll see you soon. Bye.